Yeah, yeah. yeah, one for there, yeah. Yeah, got the big one, the brownie one going up here. Yeah, a bit top of lot as well. Yeah. Now we're on the boat. Oh, As we depart the Kino, we have to do a routine safety announcement as requested by the Department of Transport. Uh, situated throughout the boat, life saving equipment, top deck of the boat, we have buoyancy aids stowed in life jacket lockers. Also on the top deck, outside of the handrails, the two self inflated life rafts, and lower deck additional buoyancy aids stowed in life jacket lockers as well. Now, this morning we'll be taking the channel of the western reaches of Pool Harbour. Upon entering the River Frome, arriving in Wareham, right about an hour from now, as we make our way up the western reaches, pointing out a few places of interest as we go along. And very, very shortly, should anybody like any refreshments, serving teas, coffees, and there are odds and ends on the lower deck, just inside the boat. Just a note, no smoking throughout the boat, and there is a small toilet on the lower deck, close to the bar. Now, if anybody has any questions or queries, uh, please don't hesitate. Come up and speak. My name's Matt. And the crumb board today is um, Steve. Now we've got a quite a fresh um, south-easterly wind in the harbour here today, a little bit of chopping. But once we turn and head up to the west, this wind will be behind us.
and concept. Oh no. You can see the beach huts along the shoreline. Well, that's Hammerley Park. It's a very popular area with the locals uh, during the summer months. Further along from Ham Park, you'll see the start of some properties here. This area is called Branksy Avenue, becoming a sought after area to live in. And actually, house prices here on the shores of Hammerley are slowly catching up in value with the houses down at Sandbanks. Now, Sandbanks is at the other end of Paul Harbour, also known as a Golden Mile. But coming back to these uh, particular properties here on the shores of Hammerley, it's quite common these days that when they actually come up for sale and change hands, the new owners have them demolished a perfectly fine house and then have purpose built ones to their own design. And as you'll see here today, several modern style properties now appearing on the shores of Hamlet. So Ham Park, leaving behind us, these are the properties at Branksy Avenue, Dorset Lake. They obviously saw active action during the war, but in later years, a good part of Dorset Lake shipyard was made redundant, and in turn, it was snapped up by developers. They built this uh, complex on the shores of Hammerley, renaming the area Moraconium Key. Now the properties at um, Moraconium have access to their own private arena, and you'll see in a few moments, once we get a little closer, the owners literally have their own yachts and boats moored yeah, just outside so their front doors. Yeah. Yeah. The very first entrance leads into their own private arena. And as you can see there today, the owners literally have their own yachts and boats more just outside their front doors. And all the remains of Dorset Lake Shipyard today is behind this wooden breakwater coming up on the right, which is now solely used as a small yacht haven come by yard. Uh, further along, next door to Dorset Lake, we have part of the Royal Marines base. This is our amphibious training centre on the shores of Hammerley. And this was no, for, sorry, formerly named HMS Turtle during the Second World War. Still the shores of Hammerley, ahead of the boat, you'll see a jetty or a pier coming out to the channel there. Uh, this is called Lakeside or Lake Pier. Once again, it's a very popular area with the locals during the summer months. And as you can see there this morning, quite a few cars and uh, one or two camper vans parked in from the pier on the shoreline, which I believe up until last year was probably the last remaining place in Paul where you can actually park free of charge. And as you can guess, the local authorities have now introduced parking charges. Now, uh, one, sorry, three or four more properties on the right. There is a white one there in amongst the fruit trees with the, uh, the blue tiled roof. It's called the boathouse. A little bit of history. Inside of the boathouse, some of the rooms are fitted out as cabins that came out of the Mauritania. The Mauritania was a cruise ship built for the White Star Line around about 1906. She held the Blue Ribbon Award between Southampton and New York at the time. Was commandeered during the First World War, used as a hospital and troop carrier. But around about 1935, the Mauritania saw the end of her life, went to the scrapyard, and a lot of the furnishings and fixtures went to auction. And as I was saying, some of the rooms in that house there are fitted out as cabins that came out of that ship. And actually, the old boat house is open to the public. Now it's literally just uh, one or two days every year. And I believe it's Dorset Heritage Week. And still looking out on the right, and two doors to the right of the boat house, the property there with flat roofs. Well, that's been recently completed in the last eight weeks. Now that plot has been empty, at least for the last six years or so. It's been up for sale with planning permission. Now that changed hands just after Christmas of this year and the plot alone sold for 1.3 million pounds. Uh, once again, still Hammerley to the right. Uh, got some clay cliffs there. 
just the other side of the hill. It's an old disused quarry. It's now literally filled with rainwater, a very deep freshwater lake. Well, that's now not called Blue Pool by the locals, but not to be mixed up with um, Blue Pool, this just outside of Wareham. And further along from the clay cliffs, I think there's a possibly a camper van there parked up on top of the hillside. Well, that area is called Han Common. That is a fantastic viewpoint from that location, looking over this part of Pool Harbour. And further along from Ham Common, you can see the start of some holiday homes there, close to those fir trees. Well, that's called Rockley Sands, or Rockley Holiday Park. That's a huge holiday complex just outside of Pool, and I believe there's over a thousand homes on that site now. And of course, just in once again during the, the Second World War, the poor villagers from Iron were evacuated by the Ministry of Defence. It was then taken over by the Royal Artillery. It had several anti-aircraft guns placed in that area. Now, uh, little gun. Well, I that we have here in Port. I lower the door down from the side of the vessel, level with the pontoons, and that enables them to push the wheelchairs on and off the boat. Now, I believe the Dolphin 3 is crewed entirely by volunteers. Acres. Although the harbour is a very large harbour, we only have four small rivers flowing to the harbour itself. Now earlier, I was trying to point out um, Rockley Point. I said there was a railway embankment and a railway bridge with a large the jurisdiction of what was the National Rivers Authority, which is now called the Environmental Agency. They impose a four knot speed limit on the river here today. Actually, several good reasons for this. Now, looking on either side of the boat, you can see the huge expanse of reed beds. This is a valuable habitat to the wildlife and nesting birds in the area. Now, by boats going too fast, they can cause a lot of wash, a lot of waves behind the boat, and in turn, this would damage this very valuable habitat. Also, by causing a lot of wash over a period of time could cause erosion to the riverbanks and slowly silt up the river front. Another valid reason for the low speed limit on the river here today, as you'll see as we slowly make our way up to Wera, we have to navigate several blind corners. And you can imagine, but in the last several years, been excavating sand and gravel from the site. Around about a thousand tons came out each week that was used locally. And before they carried out the extraction, also did a archaeological dig on the site and uncovered and find pieces of pottery which are dated as far back as the iron. To get your bearings again, that's the parish church of Lady St Mary, now ahead of the boats, as I said on the quayside of Wareham. And the line of hills are way to...
parish church of Lady St. Mary again. It appears that it hasn't. Landmark, as you made your way up the centre pool harbour. Also many years ago, the sandstone was quarried from the face of the cliff. You've been passing on the left. Actually drive down to them. Once you go through the small market town of Wareham, across the flood uh, ridge wharf and also the small village down in town. Also here at Redcliffe they have their own yacht club and this is their clubhouse, the wooden building coming up around the next corner. The dog stopped a lot. <laughs> As I was saying earlier, the line of hills are way to the left of the Purbeck Hills. They stretch for some 25. She seems quite, she seems right. yeah. In the bushes, are they? I know she's okay. She's very, very shortly now. Now I'd imagine many of you be looking around or visiting some of the small shops, cafes, pubs or restaurants in Wareham today. Being a Saturday is the weekly farmer's market on the quayside where we'll be stopping. But this next property on the right is called the Priory. The Priory is an early 16th century building which was formerly the home of a monastery. They called the Priory Hotel, which is probably the most exclusive hotel and restaurant in Wareham today. And once we go past this hedgerow on the right, You'll see the well-kept manicured lawns stretching down from the hotel. <laughs> Wait to anybody. <laughs> How do you know a name is anybody? <laughs> How do you know a name is anybody? Yeah. Yeah, okay. As I was saying, that is uh, Wareham Bridge ahead of the boat, stopping on the quayside very, very shortly now. Just to give you a time check before we get alongside, literally just gone 12 o'clock, just a few minutes past 12. Now, if we can have you back on the boat, or the boat will be leaving at 20 past 1, and that will get us back to Port Quay at half past 2. Now, once we get alongside the quay at Wareham, offloading from the lower deck of the boat at the forward end, it's a sharp end. Start from inside, but please bear with us for a minute or two until we have the boat securely moored and in position. Thank <laughs> you. 
Bay Area. Same round. On this fight. Yeah. Enjoy that. Yes, excellent. No, and the weather was good. Charlie's and the company. Or up in Tully. Yeah. Up to the mountain. Like Smash it. Yes. Yeah, it's always a bit of fun. Of course, you keep everyone in the mountain. Yeah, so. Yeah, obviously, it's great. Uh, once again, good afternoon ladies and gents, uh, boys and girls, welcome back on board the, uh, the Probate Jam. I hope you enjoyed the visit up to Wareham today, a return journey just over the hour, and back alongside of Pool Quay for around right about uh, half past two. As we get closer to the commercial dock area pool, pointing out a few other odds and ends before we finish this afternoon, and uh, once again, should anybody uh, like the refreshments, being served on the lower... <laughs>
Yeah, it's got a lot though, I think, yeah.
surfboard thing. Oh, right. Cool one, now.
Island with the taller dark fir trees that's called Rain Island. One time belonged to a local builder, Harry Palmer. He used the island as a holiday home. While well, it's still in the family, it's been handed down to his son. There are other properties on Rain Island, one of which is occupied Yes. 
prices of these sun seekers being produced here in Paul. Actually, over 99% of them are ex company. Established over 40 years ago by two local men, two brothers called the Braithwaite's. In the early years, it was actually called Paul Paraboats. Just uh, stay seated and we'll bear with us for a minute or two until we are actually secure. 